This is Optima Relationships Daily, Episode 581. When People Aren't Who We Need Them to Be by Shelby Forsythia of shelbyforsythia.com. Howdy to you on this brand new Monday. I'm Joss Marie, and this is the show where I narrate blog posts to you in order to optimize the many relationships in your life. I feature articles that give tips on dating, parenting, self-confidence, and so much more. And to optimize other areas of your life, from health to personal development to finance, be sure to check out the other shows in our network, too. You can find the shows by going to oldpodcast.com or by simply searching for Optimal Living Daily from wherever you're listening to this show. And today's post is about giving yourself permission to grieve no matter the circumstances. So let's hear what Intuitive Grief Guide Shelby Forsythia has to say and start optimizing your life. When People Aren't Who We Need Them to Be by Shelby Forsythia of shelbyforsythia.com I heard a story this week about a man who was physically attacked at a weekly poker game. As he recounted his story, I noticed that his feelings about the fight were not tied to his physical injuries or the fact that the man who attacked him had some long-standing anger issues. His feelings were based around the fact that his father, who was present at the poker game as he had been for the past 11 years, did not jump in to defend him. As he got deeper into his story, he noted that his father's pattern of inactivity, of not jumping in, was a long-standing point of contention. He said that his father, a wonderful stand-up man otherwise, had a recurring habit of ignoring, overlooking, or straight-up refusing to deal with issues. And this two-minute scrape at a poker game was another example of his father's inability to protect and defend him. What happened at this poker game was not just an attack. It was the final straw for a son who has been let down time and time again when his father failed to show up and take action. It was a lifetime of expectations and disappointments physically and painfully played out in real time. So what do we do when the people we love disappoint us? What do we do when the people in our lives aren't who we expect, want, or need them to be? We grieve. Yep, we grieve. People are supposed to be a lot of things for us. Parents are supposed to be supportive and protective. Friends are supposed to be honest and kind. Coworkers are supposed to be respectful and timely. Kids are supposed to be grateful and polite. Partners are supposed to be loving and attentive. But what do we do when they're not? When we lose our feelings of trust, safety, and hope for change, we grieve. We grieve because our expectations, however reasonable and formed or natural, are not reality. We grieve because the life and relationship we are supposed to have with this person is not playing out like we imagined. We grieve because we have to acknowledge that our parents, friends, coworkers, kids, and partners have disappointed us, have let us down, have let us know that they will not be changing. You cannot love someone and simultaneously wish they were different. It sucks, but it's true. So how do you get to loving them, warts, faults, and all? Number one, acknowledge that things will not be the way you expect, want, or need them to be. This means releasing the idea of a perfect future or a changed person. Your father may not jump in to protect you. Your friend may lie and tell you she's sick when she wants to stay in for the night. Your coworker may keep leaving the communal coffee pot empty. Your child may not believe in God. Your partner may be more focused on the TV than you when it's on. I'm guilty of this one. You get the idea. Big or small, recent or long-standing, you can grieve anything that's not what you expected it to be. It doesn't make you bitchy, needy, or selfish to expect things of others. It makes you human. Nothing is too petty. So write about it. Cry about it. Pray about it if that's what resonates with you. Just acknowledge in some way that what you expect, want, or need is not what's happening and that it will probably never happen the way you expect, want, or need it to. Number two. Take a look at your relationship with this person and ask yourself what you can do on your side of the relationship. If they're slow to defend you or stand up for you, can you talk to them about your feelings? Can you start spending more time with other people who have your back? If they're a chronic complainer, can you use mindfulness or meditation tools to distance yourself from their negativity? If they're distracted or distant, can you turn off the TV when you want their attention? Can you make a date to talk about important feelings and issues? If they're always late, can you tell them meetings are set a half hour earlier than they actually are? Can you send them a warning? Or do you need to fire them? If they're stubborn about politics or religion, can you listen to their perspective? Can you immerse yourself in groups that are more aligned with your values? 
Please note that if there is abuse of any kind in your relationship, your first priority is getting yourself and your dependents out of harm's way as quickly as possible. And number three, remember that everyone comes with their faults, flaws, and shortcomings, and that you have the power to choose where your relationship goes next. Society feeds us lots of pictures of perfect relationships, but I can tell you, and lots of other people will tell you, there ain't no such thing. Others let us down just like we let them down. And there's nothing inherently wrong with any of us. We're all just human, operating the best we know how in this world. The best part about acknowledging imperfection and never met hopes, dreams, and expectations is that we have the power to reconfigure our new hopes, dreams, and expectations to include this newly acknowledged imperfection. We can choose to end negative relationships, take action in stagnant ones, or form new relationships that better support our wants and needs. But first, we must grieve the ideal parents, friends, coworkers, kids, and partners that never were. We must release the hopes, dreams, and expectations we have of them and see them for what they are. Only then can we move forward. First, because we are seeing them with all-inclusive eyes. And second, because we are seeing ourselves as co-creators of hopes, dreams, and expectations in our relationships. You just listened to the post titled, When People Aren't Who We Need Them To Be by Shelby Forsythia of shelbyforsythia.com. Thanks a ton to Shelby, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's episode. Have a great rest of the day and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow with another insightful post where your optimal life awaits.